Hello, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. This is Barbara Fagan Smith, and I am the CEO of ROI Communication. I'm so glad you're all able to join us today. I'm really excited to, about, to talk about the ROI um, benchmark report. Uh, this is the physical report, and you're gonna hear some of the highlights from us today. Um, the other person who will be presenting with me is Erica Jensen, who is the director of our measurement practice at ROI Communication. So in case you're not familiar with ROI Communication, I know we've got lots of people joining us today. I wanna to let you know a little bit about it. We're the largest independent consulting firm focused exclusively on employee communication and engagement. We work with large complex companies such as PepsiCo and Amazon and Apple and dozens more. Um, we support communication professionals with all aspects of internal communication and engagement, particularly in times of change. And that includes everything from developing a strategy to providing hands-on support in project management, content creation, design, technology, and measurement. So today our focus is gonna be on, again, the, the benchmark report. We are going to hear key findings and recommendations. Um, we're also gonna hear from several of um, our practitioners at large companies who are gonna share their experience and their um, ideas and thoughts, which will be super helpful. So these, this slide and the next four slides represent the members of um, the ROI forums. We hold in-person forums and virtual forums, uh, and we've been doing that for many um, years, 10 years in fact, and several people are on the call today um, from these groups, and it's been growing, and as you can see, um, we've got lots of great companies who participate in, in, in these regularly. We'd love to have you on webcam if you can do that. I, I see that we've got lots of people on webcam already, which is great, or at least some, maybe not lots, but we'd love to have you join on webcam if you could. Uh, just go ahead and push the little camera icon in the right-hand side of WebEx, and you can chat if you have any questions about that. So again, we are going to be talking about the benchmark report. Um, we will share an overview of the key findings, a little bit about the report in general. Um, and Erica Jensen, who is our Director of Measurement. So these are the benchmark participants. We had um, 100, we basically analyzed data from 115 companies um, large companies, uh, and that, um, let me give you a sense, in fact, it's two pages. So these companies, the, the, the smaller, the smallest company that participated had 1,500 employees and the largest had 40,000 employees. And I'm happy to see we do have people here who participated and are hearing these results, which is great. And then to get a sense of um, who participated by organization, the most came from corporate communications and then HR after that. And then of course a, a broad representation of um, industries basically across the spectrum participated. And again here I mentioned that th these were really large companies um, going from 1,500 employees to 400,000 but the vast majority of them had, you know, more than 5,000, most even more than 10,000 employees, so larger companies. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Erica, who's going to share um, a bit about the methodology and uh, how we analyze the data. Erica. Yeah, thanks, Barbara. We started by getting information from senior leaders in communication via an online survey from all the companies you just saw. And then we collected publicly available financial data for them. With that, we did a regression analysis, which identified the significant correlations to produce the key findings that we're sharing today. And one of our goals with the benchmark is to discover what 
solid and predictive data can be found between excellence in communication and financial success. And we did find some connections that we'll share. Another goal with the benchmark is to really track the current trends in the field of communication. You know, what we're all focused on, what tools we're using, how successful we are. And we have some of these findings that we'll share with you today. And just a, a selection of them, there's many more in the 2017 ROI benchmark report. Back to you, Barbara. Barbara, you, we can't hear you. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'm just going to take a moment to talk about the ROI employee communication model that really is the framework for how we approach the survey. The model helps organizations improve the performance of their employee communication function by really creating this framework. Um, it was developed based on decades of consulting and in-house experience, um, research and input from communication professionals, many, many over the years. Uh, and really it's, it's built on three core areas, leader and manager communication, um, communication infrastructure, and open communication culture. And Erica, I am going to hand it back to you to begin to talk about the key findings. Sure. As we said, what we really want to do is identify which aspects of employee communication make the biggest difference to the bottom line. So. Let's take a look at our key findings. And the exciting news is that the 2017 benchmark report reveals that the most powerful factors to predict increased financial performance is manager communication effectiveness, trust and engagement, measurement practices, and communication measurement and uh, communication messages and message quality. All of these predict increased financial performance. And these four communication factors are categories of the ROI communication model that Barbara just explained. And a regression analysis showed that the, there's a significant relationship between each of these individual factors and financial performance. So this means, for example, that if your company scored better in manager communication effectiveness, it predicted an increase in financial performance. And there are several questions for each one of these categories that determine how well a company scores in this area. So in our study, we measured financial performance in a few different ways. We looked at income, revenue, total return to investors, and diluted earnings per share. And each one of our factors had a significant relationship with a different financial marker. So focusing your efforts to excel in these four areas, manager communication, trust and engagement, measurement practices, and message quality, will predict increased reward in terms of financial performance. And we're going to look at each one of these factors a little bit more closely, starting with you, Barbara. Oh, Barbara, we can't hear you again. Yet again, OK, here I go. I'm going to pay more attention to that. Thank you. So. Manager communication effectiveness is one of the lowest scoring areas in the ROI benchmark report. And yet, as you saw, it is a predictor of financial performance and an area we can influence directly. Um, I always say to our clients and colleagues at the companies we touch and work with, invest in manager communication. Most companies do put energy into leadership communication, but when it comes to the next level, managers, it drops off precipitously. And there's a huge opportunity here to add measurable value to your organizations through improved manager communication. So here's some more data. I'm um, really a shocking finding that manager credibility has dropped by 13 points um, survey over survey. It's really alarming. Um, managers need to be a trusted source of employees as we, uh, for employees as we know and just another reason to seriously pay attention to this area. So one more um, data point also about managers, mm -hmm. only 27% of participating companies actually do um, communication training. We're going to hear an example of a communication training program for supervisors um, from Dan at Comcast in just a little bit, so that'll be a great example. But he's one of the few, and yet it is so impactful. 
um, we have seen uh, participate managers providing regular feedback to employees about workplace performance, that has actually gone up. Um, so that's, that's a good sign. And now back to you, Erica. Thanks. Trust and engagement was the second highest scoring category in the benchmark, and 75% of participants are doing well here, which is a pretty good score, but you know that 25% of missed opportunities is very important considering what we know about how detrimental um, disengaged employees can be and the benefits that, if, that engaged employees bring. So this year we took a closer look at what influences trust and engagement. And to do that, we looked at all eight categories of the, of the communication, the ROI communication model, and we really mapped out how they influence an environment of trust and engagement. So we did some regression analysis, and we found that four categories had a significantly positive effect. And that is the first one being communication messages and message quality. You can, at 24%, you can see in the pie chart, that's a nearly a quarter of the predictive power of creating an environment of trust and engagement. Next was senior leader communication effectiveness at 23%, followed by information sharing and feedback at 19%. Role of employee communication in the organization is 14%, and manager communication effectiveness is 8%. And that, those percentages are the strengths in predicting an environment of trust and engagement in a company. So if you focus your efforts on these highest scoring areas, you should have the greatest impact in trust and engagement. So our third um, financial predictor was measurement practices, which score very poorly. Only 42% of the participants feel they're doing well here. <clears throat> and while that's four points higher than last year, you can tell that practitioners are still really struggling to get some consistent and meaningful measurement practices. But this year we also asked what people intended to focus their energy and budgets on for the next year, and 12% of participants said measurement is what they're going to focus on. So hopefully we're going to see those scores increase next time. We also asked what was getting in the way, what was the barrier to measurement, and 76% of respondents said the technology or platform limitations just didn't get them the data that they wanted to have. 64% don't have the resources to do measurement well. And then to a lesser extent, 12% said their executives weren't interested in measurement, and 10% didn't, didn't know how to interpret the data that they were getting in a meaningful way. So our last predictor of financial performance is communication messages and message quality. And this category measures messages in terms of consistency of messages, relevance, honesty, timeliness, is it accessible to all your employees, and is it coordinated with external messages. And this is the highest scoring at 76%. So people are doing pretty well here. And if we take a little deeper dive at where they're doing well, 90% of participants regularly communicate about their company's financial performance or about the company's strategic goals. 50% of the participants communicate regularly about their performance against competitors. And 64% of participants said that content shared through the formal channels was interesting and engaging. But if you flip that and put that another way, that means employees that in one of every three of our participant companies were not getting interesting and engaging content. So there's definitely an area to improve here. That is the end of, of the four communication factors that predict financial performance, but we studied other things too. And Barbara's going to tell you more about them. Okay, great. Thanks, Erica. So enterprise social tools um, are super important and growing. As you know, uh, we asked several questions on this. I'm just going to share a few. There's a lot more data in the actual report. But I'm sure this will not surprise you. And when we talk about enterprise social tools, we're really talking about tools like Yammer and Chatter, Workplace for Facebook, et cetera. Um, so you can see here that executives are using the tools least, no surprise, then managers, then employees. Um, I believe we will continue to see these numbers evolve as the tools improve, 
and as more and more companies maximize the tools that they use and how they use them. So there's lots of opportunity here. Um, and again, lots more data in the report. So 78% uh, of participants have enterprise social tools, which is really up from 2015, the last time we surveyed. However, less than 50% actually integrate these tools into their communication strategy, and even fewer are measuring them. So lots of opportunity here for sure. Uh, some great news and no surprise, uh, but first, uh, when a company has more employee communication professionals per capita, per employee capita, there is a correlation to having better scores overall on the ROI benchmark report, um, on the benchmark. So better trust and engagement in particular and an increase in revenue. So we learned that respondents, staff, an average of nearly four to, sorry, nearly um, 3.8 full-time equivalent employees, actually it's nearly four, it is 3.8, um, full-time equivalent employee communication professionals per every 10,000 employees. This is just slightly down from 2015, which was, which was four. Uh, and it's a great benchmark number for you to understand how you compare with the average in terms of the ratio of employee communication professionals to employees. And here, the focus for the year. So we asked participants to tell us where are they gonna be spending their time and their resources this year. You can see here the top areas, there's, there's a lot, you know, there's not a, a, an outlier per se, there's a lot of different topic areas. Um, employee engagement, experience, and culture, that covers a lot. Um, communicating the company strategy, measurement, um, executive and leader communication. Let me just say that all the way down at the bottom, 7% are going to focus on manager communication. Um, I would love to see that flip and move up higher. If you wanna actually be effective in these other areas, you're gonna need to do it through manager communication. Did I say um, yet that manager communication is important? <laughs> okay, and so biggest barriers to getting their jobs done, no surprise at all, is um, budget, resources, bandwidth, headcount, um, IT, leadership support and buy-in, it's too bad that we have that on at all, uh, competing priorities and constant change. So I'm sure those are familiar to all of you. So we have some recommendations here. Um, this is really based on our experience over the years um, and the results, some of which are very, very consistent survey over survey. The number one, again, is around manager communication strategy. So we know that if you're effective at manager communication, if you have improved and better manager communication in a company, that predicts increased financial performance. So it just doesn't get much better than that. Um, this is something that people really need to do. We have very kind of detailed recommendations in the book. We're also going to, in the report, but we're also going to hear from some other companies on this topic um, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also, the second recommendation is to create a measurement strategy that supports your goals. I mean, we find repeatedly that companies that measure um, their communication effectiveness and are thinking about measurement in terms of how they do their program are more effective. So they, you, you, we know there's also a direct correlation between having a measurement strategy and, and, and increased financial performance. So all of that just points to the need to have a measurement strategy. It's a huge conversation, a huge topic, but um, again, more details in the report. And then finally, make your content count. Uh, be relevant, engaging, and visual. So as we know, content is fundamental in communicating, mm -hmm. and there is tremendous competition in terms of um, the attention for employees. There's lots of flashy, exciting, cool data out there and information out there all the time. So we really have to make an effort to stay up 
and make the information that we share as sort of entertaining, engaging, and, and even more relevant to employees than, than the competition so they can hear it. So that's it on the recommendations, just to give you a high level, but I'm gonna pass it over to Erica, who's gonna talk about uh, custom ROI benchmark reports. Yeah, so the ROI benchmark report is free for all participants, as you heard, but if you didn't participate this year, it's just $150, and it includes the key findings we just went through, plus much more uh, detailed results and some other findings. <clears throat> we also offer a custom report, which is great because it compares your results to all of the benchmark participants, as well as to those that are just in your industry. So it's a really good way to compare yourself to your peers in the field and your industry. And it's $1,200, um, and it comes with a consultation with ROI communication. And if you participated in our benchmark survey, it's $750. So you can read more about it and, and purchase one on our website. And for now, Barbara and I would like to answer any questions that have come up. Let's check our chat. Please feel free to put any questions now in chat you might have. And we definitely have questions. We yeah. are just going to take a look. So I'm just going to start from the bottom. Um, so Gail asked, um, in terms of the staffing of an average of 3.8 per 10,000 employees, um, that is the average. And she asked, what is the effectiveness ratio? And we don't know that because I don't think that that could be measured um, in this survey with knowing how effective the staffing was. Mm -hmm. um, in the report, we do have a table that breaks out the average and the range of staff by the employee population. And there is a, quite a big range, um, but we do not know whether the more the larger companies were more effective at the communication than the ones with fewer employees. So there is more data, but not exactly the questions you were asking. Great, and Michelle just uh, brought us, oh, actually there's a couple. So how do you measure communication effectiveness against financial performance? That is the question. I'm gonna hand that one to you, Erica. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, if you took the survey, or if you didn't, you'll know that for all the communication categories of the model, there were several questions, <clears throat> and people answered them on a scale of one to five of how well, how, how effective they were being in those categories. So when you look at all the companies who score highly in all of those categories, and you do an analysis against those whose prior year financial performance increased the revenue, the net income, the total return to investors. And so the statistical analysis matches those independent variables of the different scores of the model categories to financial performance. And that is what determines how, what areas are effective that predict financial performance. Great, and you know, that is, there are ways to actually do a direct correlation between a communication program and financial results, but it really is a very detailed effort. I mean, one, we've got the data from the benchmark report that says, hey, it does predict it, so there's some establishing data like Erica said, but there are ways to, to actually tie it if you've got a very specific communication effort around something that is having a direct impact. So that's a huge conversation, uh, and it really depends um, uh, situation by situation to analyze and to really figure out how do we make that direct connection. So um, we have another question, how are you defining manager versus leader? So manager communication is really your front line. It's not your executives, it's not even your senior leadership. It's that next level down, anyone who has employees reporting to them and is responsible for them. So it's really, um, again, non-executive manager of people. Um, and, you know, there's, there's probably 
three or four layers in there. And what ha seems to happen is people are really great at the executive leadership communication first. Sometimes they get down to the next level. That's where most of the attention is paid. But then when you get down to level three, sometimes that's where it ends. Sometimes it goes to level four in terms of, you know, how many layers you have in an organization. Um, that's where things get lost. And you've got m employees hearing things from managers. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but, you know, you're hearing things from executives and the employee asks the manager, well, what does that mean to us? And the manager says, I don't know. I've got the same information you've got. Um, we do know also that employees join a company and they leave a manager. So when their manager is not connected with them, is not, you know, um, really understanding their needs, uh, talking to them regularly, paying attention, I mean, like that's basic, then, then, then they, you know, it's, it's really basic human needs. We need to know that what we're doing matters. We need to know that people care. We need to understand if we're doing a good job. Um, we need to know how to move forward and, and progress. So I'm also sort of answering another question, which is what are the most important elements to cover um, in, in manager training? I'm going to let um, Dan from Comcast, Dan Pryor, who's going to be the first one to present um, some of the work that he's done, talk a little bit about his process in determining what do I include in a training program? Because it, it depends on your audience, it depends on the needs of the organization, um, but I would say the very basic, basic thing to make sure that managers know, and I mean this sounds ridiculous to even say, but make sure managers are having one-on-ones with their employees, and some, some don't know how to do that. They don't even know what should be in a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, what's the structure? Uh, so something as basic as that is, is, is you know, critical. Okay, some more questions? Yeah, Erica? Yeah, there was one more just about the ideal staffing number, which relates to the effectiveness. And I'll tell you that in, in the data that we got, we did look at that, and the data just did not, was not able to come up with the answer to that question. So there was nothing significant that we could point to that said that says this is the ideal number. Um, but I'll tell you, when I was looking at the results, and if you see, there is such a range in the size of the employee population and the number of communicators that, you know, I felt, I really felt for the ones that really had so few communicators for so many yeah. employees. And what, but we, so while we couldn't determine the ideal number from our data set, we did find that, of course, the more communicators there are, it predicted increased revenue, and it predicted, predicted increased trust and engagement scores and overall benchmark scores. So it's pretty obvious to say more is better, but that is what our data could find. And, and Erica, I'll add a little bit to that, too, just from our own experience. Um, you know, there is such a thing as having too many. Uh, and often what I have found when it's too many, it's because there are a bunch of communication professionals focused just on individual executives um, versus the overarching strategy. It's much more tactical and focused on the executive. Um, and, and I have seen companies that have had hundreds of communication professionals, but I wouldn't necessarily count that as what we're talking about, because we're really talking about a strategic function that is looking at how can we effectively improve the communication within organizations um, in, in every direction, and that, as you know, is, includes manager communication. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and I, one other thing I would say is that the average of 3.8, I consider that sort of a minimum. It also depends a little bit on what type of an organization you are, uh, how complicated you are, how global you are, um, where your employees are. So some organizations require more than others. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We got a question about um, the effectiveness of communication and organization model, centralized, hybrid, distributed, and w we didn't study that in this um, benchmark report. 
but we have heard this question come up a lot just with our clients lately that it feels like there's some dissatisfaction and real questioning of the way a lot of people are structured right now. So I just add that that's an interesting question because we're we're hearing it more often, but we can't point to what is the best structure. Yeah, and, and I'll add to that too, because we have done surveys. In fact, recently, I'm going to talk briefly about the ROI partner group um, later in this meeting. And we do have, uh, we do surveys with the ROI partner group members. The, the last survey was around this topic. It's a huge topic. And having been in this, you know, business for a long time, I've seen many organizations um, centralize, decentralize, centralize, decentralize. There is actually research out there that shows that, you know, you need to actually have that, a little bit of that going back and forth because there are pros to being centralized. I can't remember the name of the, there's a book written on this too. It's not just about centralized, decentralized, but it's really about polarities. So um, when you become centralized, you have the pros, but the longer you stay there, the cons increase. And so it requires you to kind of flex back. It doesn't, you know, you might flex way back or you might just flex a little bit back because there are benefits to decentralized, right? More immediate reaction, et cetera centralized, you're more coordinated. So it's natural to have fluctuation. It's natural that an organization is going to go through many cycles at, at the top level down through every function where you're centralized and decentralized. And, you know, so that's just what I would add. There really is no ideal state. It, there are so many factors involved. But I hope that helps. When I learned that, I thought that was very interesting. So. I can mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. So we also got a question on um, one of the uh, what is what do you mean when you say the role of of the of communications of employee communications in the organization, and that is you know a category of the ROI communication model, and so that means things like is the is the role of the organization to help communicate with managers, you know, help with manager, communica manager communication, with CEO communication, with training for managers, with employee engagement. Are they active in brand communications and use of the enterprise social tools? So it is really about all of the different vehicles and ways that the communication organization reaches out to employees and the things that they're responsible for. And that's what's being measured in the role of employee communication. Okay, so, right, great. I think that's I think, the end of our question. Yeah, I do too. I think it is as well. So let's move on. If you have any other questions, obviously, throughout this session, please go ahead and add them in chat and, and we will respond. Um, so now we're going to go to talking about what some companies are doing out there. And the first person I'm going to hand it over to is Dan Pryor from Comcast. And Dan, remember to unmute your phone by doing star six. Yep, I'm and unmuted. Hello? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thanks, Dan. All right. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, I had uh, some wisdom kind of thrown to me from a gentleman at USAA several years ago around, uh, you know, the supervisor manager communications. And he kind of challenged me in, in, when, in my time when I was at Safeway uh, on how much budget we were spending on different communication programs. And there we spent a lot of money on video, you know, the website, a lot of tools, a lot of different pieces into it. Um, and he kind of challenged me and said, hey, you know, the influence we have through those tools and the way that we communicate, um, you know, if we're lucky, um, we really influence employees maybe, maybe 10% through all those tools and all of that investment, all of the content that we create. And challenged me and said, that, you know what, we've got to focus on, on those frontline leaders because 90% of what gets communicated to employees and what's going on comes from that leadership team. Um, that direct interface uh, with their leaders. And 
Um, it's something that we weren't doing. And so I kind of took that challenge and uh, actually worked with ROI to help develop this first at Safeway, but then uh, now at Comcast. And Comcast has kind of taken it to another level. And, and when, when we talk about communication training, we kind of looked at it uh, as, as both communication training and uh, really culture training. It's kind of what is the expectation of we have for our frontline leaders uh, to communicate with our employees as well as emulate a certain culture. And so if, uh, if, if you could forward the slide, um, we kind of came together with uh, some training goals and objectives uh, focused around our engagement survey. So our engagement survey, um, it was called Credo Speak. It's now called Your Voice. We do it once a year. Um, we have incredible participation. Last year we had 93% of employees participate. And if you kind of took out those that are like on leave of absences and so forth, we were closer to 98% participation rate uh, with about an 84% favorability um, on uh, uh, from coming out from, uh, from those employees. In addition to that, that's then translated into some external pieces about um, surveys and that we've done through like best places to work and those type of pieces where We've had, you know, over 50% of our employees participate in those external surveys and really lead to, um, you know, some high rankings uh, as far as large employers. Um, and, you know, the larger you get, the harder it is to kind of get all of those employees on the same page. So some good external pieces. But from the slide that's up there now, you can kind of see we have a, 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 a thing called an ownership index that's, that's put out during that engagement survey that really kind of focuses on six core areas. But some of the things that we that we really wanted to drive that, um, but we really wanted to make sure employee, those supervisors really knew what the expectation was to drive engagement within their organization. Uh, we also drilled in and made sure that, um, you know, the one-on-ones, and we didn't want to say, hey, this is the way you do a one-on-one -on -one and it has to be in this kind of cadence. We actually left it in a very open, forum during the class for them to kind of figure out what that is as an overall group, um, which was, I think, a really great piece that they were coming up with some of the answers instead of us just kind of preaching to them. Um, and then we at, at Comcast use uh, insights, um, you know, the color energy type pieces, if for those of you that haven't seen it, it's much like DISC or Briars Riggs to um, to kind of give people a, a lineup of how they communicate and how they do that. Um, we also really wanted to make sure that we created this culture and, employ and those supervisors were continuously forcing it down around caring about employees, um, but caring about employees with the idea of making sure that they're successful. So um, these are some of the kind of the overall objectives. If you can jump over to the, to, to the next uh, slide. Um, some of the approaches that we wanted to make sure that this was very interactive, it was fun, it was tac it was uh, very um, tactical and practical, um, and that, you know, most people when they say, hey, I've got to go to this, uh, you know, supervisor training class, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a dread, you've you got to go through either a webinar or this. We made this very interactive. Um, it's about a five-hour course. We kind of thought the managers, um, you know, their type of days, um, so we don't start it till nine o'clock and we're done by three. So we kind of take the middle of their day, they get a chance to do some of their stuff in the morning, go through the, the course, and then end it by three and they're back to be able to kind of get some of the stuff done that they need. But it's around the foundation of our ownership index and around what um, we think really drives engagement. Um, six core areas, it's about communication, it's around training and development and, and what they're doing for their employees. It's about community, how they are involving themselves in the community um, and with, uh, you know, the company. Uh, it's about career and career development and having those conversations with employees about where their career is going. It's about consistent and, and uh, meaningful recognition. And then it's about empowerment and really getting your employees to be able to move and do the things that they need to do. If uh, I can go forward one on the slides. So this is the course agenda. Um, we kind of do some welcomes and introductions. Uh, we actually throw out kind of a, a check-in question at the beginning of this that we ask the question, 
uh, of people to say, hey, who, who is a leader or supervisor that you loved working for and why? And uh, we gather a list, uh, that list comes down, and actually through the rest of the course, most of the things that end up on that list, we start talking them through and how they can become that. Um, and they all kind of tie back to those ownership index typically. That's kind of how we developed it in the first place. Um, we talked about the importance of interpersonal skill or communications, um, a lot about stuff that came out of the ROI benchmark and um, from other sources. We go through insights and color so they understand um, the type of color types and how they prefer to, to communicate versus how their team might prefer to communicate. We talk about caring conversations and about the fact that, you know what, at Comcast we have certain standards that certain jobs need to meet. And as a leader, it's their job to get those people to that level. Well, we talk about communication tactically, some of the channels, how they would do that, how to interpret um, content that's coming down from a pie and being able to translate that into real terms for their teams. Um, we actually have some application pieces where they go through exercises, do role plays, um, and, and kind of line up on that. And then kind of finish up the day with, with a, a challenge to go back and things to interpret and try with their team each day. A, a big portion of this is the one-on-ones. Um, as I kind of, as we started developing this course, I kind of realized um, in all of the leadership, I've, I've been have a, some, a lot of leadership development piece in my past as well, and nobody ever really sat down and said, what does a good one-on-one -on -one look like? I had the benefit of having some great leaders that I worked for um, show me what those look like, um, and then we've drawn those out from teams as well. Matter of fact, this entire course was built first off of um, what we have as an employee communications council, and it's frontline employees that we've, and, and a few su frontline supervisors that we brought in from all areas of the business, and we talked about what was working and what wasn't working in communication, what they were getting from their leaders and what they weren't getting from their leaders. Um, so we were able to, in these, in these uh, training sessions, say, hey, here, here's what the field is telling us is working and what's not working. And it was a, a great way to gather that information and really build this course from scratch. And if we go to the, the I think my last slide here, um, we kind of broke it down into three, three different areas about, um, as we kind of did these training topics, it's kind of a why, how, and what, and when. Um, you can kind of read through those different pieces in here. Um, but it's, it, it's really trying to make sure that they, as leaders, and many of these people being first-time supervisors, did not get any communication training. Um, we get them some practical presentation pieces so that they're in a group meeting. It's around how to um, create those emails and texts and run a meeting. Um, and really about recognition, making sure that the culture that we want here at Comcast internally is um, being built. Um, and the great piece is that we're really seeing some great uh, progress with both our uh, engagement surveys um, and external pieces, and uh, that's kind of the, the supervisor comm training. We, they, we are in our second year. We went through first year of trained, uh, let's see, about 300 uh, leaders, and then we go supervisors all the way through directors um, in the organization. The senior leadership team has gone through this so that they embrace it and they know what, what exactly uh, is the expectation. And uh, we did 300 last year, and we will kind of finish up and do about another 200 uh, leaders this year. Um, I'll tell you, it's a lot of work. It's difficult. Um, we really partnered with our uh, learning development teams um, and ROI to kind of get this all together. Um, but it's been very, very effective here at Comcast. So uh, back to yeah, you, Barbara. Thanks. thanks so much, Dan. And actually, we have a couple questions for you. So um, one question is, does Comcast incent leadership with bonuses or something to get employees to participate? Oh, well, this is a little different, but it's uh, to participate in the engagement survey. So how do you get employees to participate in the engagement survey? Um, so, so on the engagement survey, um, there, what I'd say, there are a few incentive prizes type things, but there, there's no management piece, it's just part of the culture that we want to hear from our people, we want to know what's going on, 
And I think more importantly that we take all of that information and it's not a one-time survey. Once that information comes back, the leaders are um, mandated really to come back and share kind of the overall results of what that came back. Create action plans. Those action plans are housed in a portal and monitored uh, by the, the next level supervisor. Um, and it's kind of a continuous process through the year. So employees actually see results from being putting stuff into that uh, in that engagement survey, um, which I think is a big piece. We do do some prizes and basically, hey, you know, you take the engagement survey and uh, it's anonymous. So then we have you say once you take it, send an email to to this box and we do some you know five or ten prizes for for the whole organization. It's not a not a huge piece, but it just kind of creates some buzz around it. Great, thanks, thanks, Dan. One more question. Um, well, actually, maybe two more. Who facilitates the Comcast course? Um, yeah, who facilitates? Yeah, so uh, we actually have ROI Communication. Um, one of the consultants uh, actually come, has come in and taught each of those. Um, it, somebody on my myself or somebody on my team actually is involved with each one of those courses as well. Uh, I wanted to make sure we were really embedding the right culture piece, so I'll kind of jump in and out of it from a, from a culture uh, con concepts and, and adding, the, adding some color from Comcast into it. Uh, but ROI communication has taught all of these. Um, we, uh, it, we were going to do, and we actually built the course originally to do a train the trainer and do T3s and have our own leaders uh, do this, um, but we felt like uh, the facil facilitation of the class was so much better uh, when uh, when ROI was doing it that we we stuck with that and actually kind of did another contract to have them do have you guys do that besides develop and build the materials. Great, and one more question: um, How are you measuring success of the program? So um, measurement of success, um, it really ties back to that ownership index. So out of our engagement survey, there are certain questions that tie into that ownership index. Um, and we've seen year over year improvement in that ownership index. Um, that's, that ownership index really kind of, uh, it's not quite exactly the favorability piece that I talked about. Um, but when we started our favorability, we were in from, from a leader um, communication piece was I think 68%, uh, so it wasn't horrible, but we've driven it up to about 84% um, through these courses. Wonderful, thanks so much, Dan. Um, we've got people saying very helpful insights, really so great to hear a specific example, and we've got more. I'd like uh, Michelle Wolpe from Autodesk to share her example as well now. Thanks, Michelle, star six. Okay, great. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. That was amazing, Dan. Really impressive. I'm going to be sharing something a little more um, discreet, I guess, or tactical um, for, for what we do with manager communications here at Autodesk in San Francisco. Next slide, please. So a few years ago, probably about four years ago now, uh, we were really hearing a lot from managers that they were overwhelmed with disparate emails they were getting from different groups and benefits and uh, technology IT and different groups within the company and it was just very difficult for managers in our company to stay on top of the things they needed to know about actions they needed to take and so we made a decision to try something new which was to create a consolidated e-newsletter that would go out to our managers around the world once a month and try to pull in HR as well as other types of content with a focus on action. So we called it action for Autodesk managers, uh, actions. And it's really, you know, what do you need to know now just in time, uh, important information that um, is important for managers to stay on top of. And we uh, worked with the various departments and organizations to partner with us on this so that they'd stop doing their disparate emails and join a council with us and a planning, an editorial calendar planning process so that we could consolidate all of this information that was going out kind of ad hoc into one piece. So what you're seeing is a sample of 
the Actions for Managers newsletter, we call it, and we tend to focus a lot, um, if you go to the next slide, it's a little bit of a closer up view of this. Um, you can see the kinds of content. It's everything from focal communications to um, upgrades to Ariba, and uh, kind of the left column is more the need to know now information, things that are changing or things you need to take action on. And then on the right hand side, we often uh, remind managers of recent communications they should stay on top of to help them be informed and do a better job as managers leading their team. So we'll give them um, recaps of webcasts that the senior leaders have had. You can see here we've got our co-CEO webcast on demand. We do uh, a quarterly earnings uh, webcast. And then we do um, this news desk piece is a monthly video program. So it kind of pulls together both actionable, need to know uh, content with Make sure you're on top of this and stay informed content. So again, this is going out monthly to all of our managers around the world, and we just continue to get really, really positive feedback. We've taken away the, as I said, problem of all these disparate emails coming at them and how do you stay on top of them and where did I put that email when I actually really need to now act on it. And also kept the content pretty concise, we keep it down to a few sentences with lots of links instead of what used to be a lot of wordy, verbose um, emails in some cases. So I think it just makes the job of being a manager at Autodesk a lot easier. Jennifer, star six. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good, great. So thank you so much for that. Um, Hello to everybody. I'm Jennifer Williams. I'm the head of internal communications for Vanguard here in beautiful Pennsylvania. Just left Brooklyn to move to Pennsylvania, so so getting used to hearing the birds in the morning. But um, so we, I, uh, Vanguard's interesting. They they have a lot of internal communication staff, but they've never had a really centralized internal communications function. So uh, there's a lot of some very basic things that I am now putting in place. Um, that haven't existed before. So uh, many of you are, have launched and are currently managing and leading pretty sophisticated programs around manager communications. We're, we'll get there, but for right now, I'm, um, we're putting the foundation in place. So um, if you move to the next couple of slides, I'm introducing um, a program called Leader Update, and that is going to go to all of our, we call them people leaders here at Vanguard, all of our managers across the company. And the goal is to make sure that we provide our senior management with good information regularly, and that it's timely, it's relevant, it's strategic. The goal is to provide strategic alignment across the organization, to support a regular cadence of team communications, and to make sure that our senior managers are really well informed, which makes them more confident and better communicators. And we have a, a particular, um, challenge here in our organization, which is that um, we've, our research has shown that while our, our, we call them crew, we have a nautical team here at Vanguard, while our crew have a great understanding around our purpose, where we are absolutely a mission-driven organization. 90% of our people can articulate our purpose. There's a lot less um, understanding around our strategy. So when I came on board seeing those numbers, um, I knew that that was going to have to be my primary focus for the first year. So this is going to be a critical tool around that. And if you go to the next slide, uh, so it's really based on research, and, and none of this is going to look surprising to anybody um, at RI or here. At, you know, our supervisors and leaders have a lot of credibility as communicators, which is great. And then our crew, again, our crew, our employees, rated um, our staff and team meetings and then one-on-one -on -one meetings with their managers as their top sources for information. And one of the one of the wonderful things um, that our our research also uncovered is that our managers are more engaged and have a more positive perspective on Vanguard than our non-managers do, which is great. That's another reason why they're fantastic channels because our managers are highly engaged. And I think um, uh, in, in other organizations where I've worked or talking to peers in the industry, and sometimes it doesn't work that way. There's actually a inverse relationship to as you rise in the organization, if you become a little more cynical, that's certainly not true here at, at Vanguard. So um, that's really wonderful. This, that's something to, to truly leverage. And if you go to the next, just to show you some of the numbers, um, this is what we're looking at. About 80% of people um, speak very highly about the communications that they get from um, their, their managers. Um, you can see um, 
Uh, they say it's timely, that they're open and transparent, that they really work, our, our, our leaders are trying very hard to make sure that our people are informed, um, and they ha are using, open to using different types of tools to do that, whether that's by blogs or, or social media or just good old face-to-face, -face, and that they, they really are good communicators. And then if you go to the next, um, the next slide, you can see that um, where our people rate. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see how our people rate our uh, where our, our um, they're open in terms of key communications. Um, you can see that uh, nearly 90% of our people say they like to get information, staff and team meetings, which is pretty much what I'm hearing from everybody else here. I'm sorry, that was the next slide. If you could move to the next slide. Um, anyway. So uh, thank you so much. So and, and after that, our internet, um, we, our internet is, is people know to go to our internet for this first. But really, people want to hear it from their managers, and whether that's in one-on-ones or, or team meetings. So that's a channel that we decided to, to leverage. And um, so the strategy was for, for everybody in the phone. This is not going to look surprising. On the next slide, you can see that our strategy is to leverage the credibility and preference for crew. Um, to keep crew better informed, to keep to make our provider leaders with um, timely information, updates on strategy, and business priorities, and that's to promote consistent strategic alignment across the organization. Which I think it's a good point. We were talking about um, earlier about the number of internal communicators and whether there's a correlation between the number of internal communicators and high scores um, in terms of communications effectiveness and, and other key drivers. And we have it, Vanguard, the, the same survey, same um, organization, um, did an audit of internal communication staff across the organization. And 86 people in our company of 15,000 employees identified as, as being primarily focused on internal communication. But that has not correlated with a strong understanding across the organization of strategy, of um, strategic alignment. There's a lot of um, inconsistency in terms of understanding inconsistency in communications. And I think, Barbara, you are right on. And those groups are really focused on tactics. They're very tactical. They're very strong in ex on execution. But there literally are no communication strategists within the organization. So that's something that I'm looking to build. But um, that's a really critical component um, of the communication strategy going forward. If we even had less resources, I think I'd be happier. Because there's a, if you have a resource, they start generating information. And that doesn't necessarily mean that's aligned. But as we all know, that um, one of the reasons why you focus on managers is because they're really critical to building that line of sight. So, um, it, you know, crew need to understand how what they do on a daily basis connects to our broader strategy and objectives. So that's why we have to go to managers. And everybody on this call knows all this information. But so the next slide, you can see what we're going to be doing. We're going to launch this after our um, mid-year annual crew town hall meeting with our CEO, where he's going to be talking about um, our strategy. And I'll launch this immediately afterwards. You can see I've cleverly disguised. I did up a dummy model, and I put some proprietary information in there so you can see my design skills at work here. I cleverly disguised that information so I could show you what this looks like. Um, but we'll, there, we'll have talking points um, that will be talking about some of the, the most important ways that we're positioning ourselves in the marketplace. We produce a lot of research, but we don't, do, we don't help people to know what, what, what the most relevant research is. So we have, I have somebody on board who's going to help to curate all of the hundreds of pieces of research that we produce um, on a yearly basis so we can help people to understand what the most critical uh, research is. Um, we're going to have an update on strategy and every, one, every, um, every issue or what we're doing to advance our strategy and our strategic priorities. And then we're going to have a message from our CEO uh, from Bill McNabb. And he does a lot of work around talking to employees, crew, in our, um, our annual meeting in January, then our, our mid-year meeting. But, uh, but beyond that, um, he hasn't been as, as visible as he would like to be. So we're, I'm just going to do a quick message from him on top. And we're going to use a marketing tool, Exact Target, so we can make sure we can measure um, tools and uh, track um, traffic and clicks and, and open rates and all of that good stuff. And then really critically, since this is a new program, six months out, I'm going to go out and measure and see if this is helpful for people. I certainly do want to push something in people's mailboxes if it's not helpful. Um, but I'll be measuring um, how people receive it um, and then what they would like to receive if this is actually helpful or not. So that's the, it's pretty basic, but, but that's where we are right now. Jennifer, this is so helpful. All of these examples are so helpful. And just congratulations, one, on how much progress you've made for how long you've been at Vanguard. They're lucky to have you. 
um, two, that you're basing it all on measurements <clears throat> and that you're really, you know, getting the information and then, and then creating a plan based on data is fabulous. So thank yeah. you. Um, so there's a couple of questions for you and then I have questions also for Michelle and Dan. So let's go to you. First question is, um, what is CrewNet? I am so sorry. CrewNet is our intranet. And the nautical theme here runs, goes a little crazy here at Vanguard. Um, our our um, cafeterias are called galleys. Our gyms are called ship shape. So I was really afraid when I joined, I could see people laughing when I joined that I was going to have to write all my list saying, ahoy mateys. We don't go that crazy. But, um, <laughs> but it, is, it, is, it is consistent. And so um, uh, uh, that's, so we, our intranet is called CrewNet, which I think is actually kind of clever. Great. All right, another question. How long is the leader update and how frequently will you publish it? I'm going to publish it monthly and I'm going to try to keep it to one page. People are really overwhelmed with information like they are anywhere. And we'll do links back to um, a separate section on CrewNet that we're creating where we can archive information. When, you know, when we're talking about um, talking points, I would also like to have this in a form where people, the managers can download this. Um, and send it out in a, maybe another fungible form where they can, we'll put this up on a PowerPoint presentation so people can, if they need to, if they feel more comfortable looking at PowerPoint, they can do that. But I'm going to keep this, I'm going to work really hard to keep this to one page. Great. Another question. Um, uh, one person says, I note the, that the examples rely on sending useful info in an email. Did you consider creating a website or page for managers? And what advantages do you gain from email that you couldn't realize by training managers to go to a website? So, yeah, that's a great question. So, yes, we will create a page that will be archival. I have in the past, I've launched these programs at, at two former employers, and we found that there wasn't a whole lot of traction to the website. So we loaded it up with all sorts of great research and resources and all sorts of cool stuff, and then very few people went to it. So um, I'm, I'm going to wait and see how much traction we get on this, but I am going to create a page on our intranet for that. Um, and what was, I'm sorry, what was the rest of the question, Barbara? Yeah, no, that was it. I mean, it was really sort of, and I think you're answering it, it's, it's you know, what's the advantage of email? I mean, I think you can combine it and you can push an email and drive people to the content in a, on a website, um, or you could do both, have it in the, the, and that sounds like what you're going to do. It's going to have a home on CrewNet. Is that right? Yes, it will. And this is an unusual company. Our people are used to going to CrewNet, our intranet for information. We do very little push communication. Our, for example, our CEO does not send out push communications. He publishes his memos to, our, to CrewNet, and people know to go there and look for it. But um, I feel like if we do a push communication, that actually is going to get people's attention in a good way because it's coming from our CEO and it's delivered to them. And I know that sounds like that's pretty basic, but in this company, we don't do that. So I wanted this also to stand out from the rest of his communications with crew. That's great. Perfect. Um, I think we have those. Um, well, actually, no, there's another. Do you have a small group of communicators controlling the distribution of these emails, or do you allow communicators across the organization to use the tool to send emails, you know, so uh, centralized? That target's fairly new. Um, we've only used it a couple of times for internal communications. Yes, we have. We keep very tight control over who can send what to whom. And, in fact, um, our, our legal team, and I, I need to discuss this with them, only allows HR to uh, distribute emails to all employees. And um, I'm, I'm going to try to move the permission rights over to my team as well. But right now, we're very strict on that. Okay, great. A couple more questions, and then I, I still have some also for Dan and Michelle. Um, so for you, Jennifer, how do you know anyone is reading and acting on the info? Do you embed ways to know that? Um, any answer to that? Yeah, so in using exact target, we'll be able to gain access to metrics. When we send emails out now, we have no way of knowing if people are reading and opening them. So it's one of the reasons why I wanted to use this new tool, and I'm making this a bit of a pilot for that. Um, so I can see opening rates, of course. You don't know. People can open something and go to lunch, so you don't know if they're really reading it. But I, And then we are going to track click-through rates to where it goes to where we're archiving information. And then, of course, 
we are going to go out after six issues. I am going to go out and see what people say about it together. Do a formal gathering of, of feedback on it through that as well. Great, thanks. Thanks so much. Now I'm going to go back to Michelle and Michelle. A similar question about your message map: Is the message map only shared in email, or do you archive it online as well? Sure, and you can still hear me. Yes. Great. Similarly. Um, to what was just mentioned, uh, we also find that email is a really great way to get people to pay attention to communication. But yes, we have a manager resource center and all of our content is housed there along with other tips and tools. We've recently done some manager focus groups around the world and also a communication survey, um, which included a manager comms section. And we also found that managers don't go to that website very often. It's it's mm -hmm. just it's just a time thing. So what we find is the email piece is more effective. If they're really interested in something and we create a link to more content, they'll go there. But we find the push, just given how busy our managers are and how little time they have, that the email push is really um, important in our culture. So we do both, but we think the email piece is what really works. Great, great. And then quick question for you, Dan. Um, is the Comcast training program all in person, classroom sessions, or virtual, or both? Yep, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yep, yep. So uh, I, the, the classes are all in person. Um, the, the way that it was designed is very interactive, um, and there's a lot of pieces where they're actually building what I'd say in some of the content on the fly, um, uh, the, the people that are participating. So it's really important that it be. Uh, in person, as well as because we're trying to build culture there, um, it's it just, I think it's critical that they be in person. Yep, great, great. Now I'm going to pass it to Kristen Taylor from HPI. Hi, Kristen. Okay, you need to star six to unmute yourself. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Great. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. We had some proprietary HP fonts that weren't rendering well on the WebEx, so bear with me just a second. Um, it was really encouraging to hear from Jennifer and Dan and Michelle um, on where they are with their manager programs um, and their training. Michelle, I think we're, we're probably uh, pretty close to, to um, doing something very similar to your action update, so it's, it's great to hear it's been successful. And a quick shout out to my former Citrix colleagues, Liz Keg and Nick Dugan, who are on the call. Great to see you here. Um, so this is uh, kind of step one. This is a, a run before you walk or walk before you run exercise for us, but I want to show you sh kind of short term what we're doing with manager comms and then what our longer term vision is. Uh, the good news is we're building off of really good managers. We have very high quality managers. Um, we're well above the Aon norm, um, you can see. And we had actually used this to move to a ratingless system this year. So if anyone is going through that right now, um, feel free to reach out to me. I can, I can share some best practices. Um, this probably looks familiar to all of you. This is, this is kind of the life of a manager at HP. I think the, the smile is also missing from this, but we, you know, there's, there's so much that they're tasked to do. Um, and I, I especially think this is true with our manager of managers or what I refer to as the moms in our organization. Um, they have to, they're, they're kind of sandwiched in between their leaders and then they also have to make sure that they're empowering and equipping their managers to be good managers. So um, th this is true probably universally for all of us, but uh, we see them as an incredibly important channel. So it's great to see that confirmed in the benchmark report. Um, they play a very key role in employee experience. Um, they're culture carriers for us and obviously they're, they're key to driving performance. And so um, the, it, they have to understand what's expected of them. Um, they have to develop required skills. So the work that, that Dan's doing, um, I think is really, really important work. Understanding the priorities and recognizing when and how to take action. So it's kind of ADCAR where you enable them and give them the tools at the right time. Um, and then, you know, leading by example. So what we're doing is um, it's a, a kind of a hybrid where we have manager central it's a uh, portal that has all kinds of different resources on it. And then there's a push communication that will go to them on a monthly basis. And I'll give you a, a closer look at that in just a second. 
um, it's a push communication that gives them kind of what they need to do, what they need to share, and then learning opportunities for them as managers. It also points them to a toolkit that they can incorporate into their meetings. So it's plug and play slides that are scripted that feature key programs, um, strategy updates, earnings messages, um, ready to go. We're partnering with, um, we, we report into HR, so we're kind of church and state at HP. You have exec comms reporting into corp comms on the marketing side, and you have employee comms reporting into HR. So we partner, it's beautiful, because we partner very closely with our, um, both our COEs and then our business partners. We also have a functional comms network that we tap into. Um, we're a hybrid model where we have a very small centralized employee comms team and then um, comms partners out in the business. And then we have site councils at, at uh, most of our major sites. So um, we're targeting May for our first publish. So you guys are seeing a prototype, um, kind of a sneak peek. Um, this is uh, how it will work. So we have our monthly checklist. Um, it's, it's six or eight items, no more than that. It's really what are the must-dos, the must-see TV for managers. Um, we are pushing it because we are an email culture, um, but we are also, they can also, we're, you know, driving behavior to the Manager Central website. They can find past um, to-do lists there. They can find all their toolkits, et cetera. So let me give you a better look. I'll just show you an actual email. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so this is um, the prototype that we're uh, testing right now. We actually have a couple that we're testing. We're testing the name as well because we're a global company. But it's the events that they need to pay attention to and download. It's the toolkit. It gives them like what they're going to find here. And then this is their list. So register for the all manager call, plan a watch together event for the all employee meeting. Um, we're migrating to Windows 10 right now. That's actually really important from a productivity standpoint. A recognition reminder. Here, you know, is a development opportunity for them. We're rolling out standards of business conduct right now. Here's an updated corporate overview presentation. Um, continue having your regular conversations with your teams. And then we're also um, doing a, a career profile um, rollout as well. So these are just kind of the top actions for managers. We give them useful links. And then this is how we're measuring, real simple. I, don't, I hope no one picks this one. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. But um, it, what they'll do is they'll hit one of these um, emoticons, and then they'll have a, a text box where they can give us more feedback. So it's not just you know, a binary action. They can actually give us some qualitative feedback as well. So that's the email. And then let me show you real quick the longer term plan. That's our chief legal counsel. I have a major girl crush on her. She is amazing. Her name's Kim Rivera and just is sharp and as cool as they come. Um, okay, so we have the email checklist. This is phase one. Phase two is really insight gathering. So we do have a lot of data that we've looked at um, prior to putting this together. Um, but we, we don't have a really good assessment of what managers need, and we haven't segmented either. So right now, this is kind of a one-size-fits-all program. Over time, we'll segment and be able to hopefully at, at some point regionalize and localize the, the communication. So it's really, really, really super relevant to them. Um, then we need to kind of develop our future state vision and it's also about creating community, right? We have all these great managers. So how do we connect them? How do we empower them to connect to each other and learn from each other, whether they're meetups um, on site, we, whether we use you know, Yammer to create virtual forums for them. Um, we have a, our manager calls right now are tied to earnings and they're big snooze fests. They are pre-recorded and we have very little engagement. Um, so we wanna completely blow those up and, and reinvent them as well. And then finally, you know, this is a continuous journey um, that managers needs change over time. So how are we keeping in tune to what they need on a regular basis? And, you know, whether it's leveraging our it's a voice inside action, that's our annual employee survey, um, or whether we just use focus groups or use our emojis, we do want to make sure that this is, you know, continuous, continuously improved over time. 
And then we always do this for every single thing that we do. Like, what is it that we hope they will say if we're successful? And, um, you know, this is sort of our, how we kind of keep our North Star and we do it for all of our employee comms programs. So that is it. Um, we are at the beginning of our journey, so I'm happy to give an update um, once we start moving into some other phases and develop our future state vision. And if you want to reach out to me personally, uh, feel free. Thank you. Kristen, thank you so much. Really great, great um, content and so well laid out. Just really fantastic. Thank so you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I am just going to quickly share a little bit um, before we move on, or before we close, actually, because our time is, is drawing near, um, about the ROI Partner Group, which is um, a annual partnership with ROI Communication. And I don't see the slides up here. Maybe we can get the slides up. There we go. Okay. Um, so this, we just started the ROI Partner Group last year and um, we're excited about it. So let me tell you a little bit. It's, it's an annual partnership, like I said, that provides our members with just-in-time access to strategic consulting, um, hands-on support, networking, diagnostic tools. It's customizable, flexible, and affordable. And we really developed this service in re response to what we were hearing from people and what they needed and what we're seeing on a regular, place, uh, regular basis because um, we know the stress everyone is under, um, demand and complexity continue to rise while at the same time budgets and resources shrink. So we wanted to be creative about how do we help reduce the burden and make significant measurable progress. So that's the idea. Um, these are some of the challenges that we find um, many, many uh, of today's internal communication teams are confronting. So that's, um, you know, what we hope to help with at, with the ROI Partner Group. Um, here are our current members. We've got a great, great group of members and growing all the time. Again, we just started last year. We're being careful about how quickly we grow it. Um, so it, it, let me tell you just a little bit more about what are each of the elements. There are six areas that you experience over, over a year. Um, the first is really trusted advice and best practices, and that's ongoing and unlimited guidance and coaching and access to ROI's best practices, templates, and knowledge repository. So you have a, a um, strategic advisor who's assigned to you and you can call them up anytime, um, get examples, connect with people. Um, so it's really a service that our members love. Strategic direction, that's like a half-day strategy session. Hands-on support is 40 hours of program support to tackle projects, initiatives, or even you can use it for personal development for your team. Um, the high value networking, that's opportunities to connect with your peers. We have some members on the, um, on the call and I'm gonna let you all know that we are planning a sort of flagship summit that's gonna be in July um, besides the regular meetings that happen. Um, this one's going to involve a, um, a, a baseball game at AT&T Park uh, and also um, a summit at, at one of our partner member groups. So this summer, that's just, it's gonna be like an annual thing that we do. So <clears throat> you'll hear more about that. There's measurement dashboard. And so we have this online tool that we've developed that helps you monitor and really communicate and share your program and how you're doing and make improvements as you go. And then of course, a custom ROI benchmark re report and you saw what that is about. So we've had a lot of positive feedback. Um, Wendy is just one example. She couldn't be here, but was happy to have us share some of her um, thoughts on, on how this um, group has helped her. And I have a couple members on the call. One is Ken from Chevron, and Ken mentioned that he'd be happy to, to share his experience. So Ken, you can star six. 
Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Great, okay. Um, yeah, this is Ken Pimento, the Chevron, and, uh, you know, I guess what I would say is um, what's interesting, Barbara, you, you listed the sort of six major benefits, and I know in talking with uh, the other members, I think each of us capitalizes on those benefits in a different way. Uh, and I would say probably one of the, the most important things for me has been helping me break out of my sort of isolation. We all get sort of nose to grindstone within our own organizations um, and really focused on what we're doing inside our firewalls. But being able to, as a manager of a team, step out of that firewall, um, talk with others to help identify my own development gaps, uh, and then be able to use the resources like the 40 hours, like the strategy planning session, to help close and address my own gaps, I think has been uh, phenomenal. The other thing that I'm really capitalizing on is the professional development piece. And so I'm using the mind, um, uh, I guess the, the, the treasure trove of great mind activity that's in that, both the ROI team as well as the um, other members of the partner group uh, to bring that in, in the, you know, we're using our hours for it to have an ROI consultant come in and sit with my team and my team meetings to help raise our game and to help address and answer some of the questions and challenges that we're having globally. Um, and I know um, Leslie came in, she's my dedicated partner, so she and I do a monthly check-in, uh, and then she was able to come in and do a good training session with my team, and then one of my team members sits in Singapore and she's now um, going to have a separate session with our colleagues in Singapore that have some additional specific gaps that need to be closed. So I think, uh, like I said, there's, all those benefits are wonderful. We each capitalize on them differently, and that seems to be the, the biggest um, value that I'm currently getting out of it. Great. Ken, thanks so much for sharing. And um, <clears throat> Dana the other day at a lunch said that um, – which I loved and she was supposed to be here, but then she couldn't be here, but she said it was the best money she had spent all year. Yeah. Um, and it's actually $29,500 for the year. Um, you know, we're, we're building it carefully. We have 20 uh, partners right now. Um, we certainly are adding a couple every month and um, we're helping folks who don't have it in their budget if they're wanting to join to, you know, spread out the payments etc. So if you're interested, um, let us know and we can schedule a short call. But I just wanted everyone to know about it because I think it's really helpful uh, and it's affordable and it's flexible. So um, I'm excited about it after all these years of doing consulting to offer something that is so accessible and helpful. So thank you all. So great to have this time with everyone and thank you to everyone who shared. Um, so helpful to hear, you know, practical examples of, of how people are um, improving employee communication within their own companies. So thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, TGIF. And we do have this recorded, so if you want other people on your team or other people to see it, um, you'll be able to access it. Thanks again. Bye-bye.